Good morning and, uh, and welcome this morning. A beautiful morning, a little bit of a busy morning, but a pretty morning. And I'm John Steyerwald. I'm pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church. We welcome you to morning scripture uh, opportunities and uh, we come on every weekday morning at 1030. So, so good morning this morning as, as we begin our time together to, to read over scripture and to pray together. Uh, and just a couple of notes. If you're just new and have just come on for the first time, we invite you to um, check for notifications and like this and come on with us every weekday morning at 10. Also, we invite you to worship on Sunday mornings at 930. We stream from the St. John's Sanctuary and we stream from the Facebook page of St. John's, which is the handle is Welcome to St. John. So good to see you this morning. I think I see Diane. I'm kind of far from the phone. And, uh, and I, can, I cannot see everyone that's on. I think that I see, my goodness, uh, good friends this morning. So this morning we're going to read two passages from the lectionary. One passage is from Genesis. The other passage is going to come to us from Revelations. And while we're uh, doing that, I greet Donna this morning as well. And when we finish reading the passages, I want to talk a little bit about promises, uh, family trees, and land. And uh, believe me, they all, they all are connected. So uh, as we come together, let's, uh, let's begin this morning with just simply a reading from Genesis. This is chapter 25, verse 12 through 18. And this will be a long genealogy. And there will be a reason for this, I think, as uh, we begin our talks this morning. Um, so here we are, Genesis 25, 12 through 18. These are the descendants of Ishmael. Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian Sarah's slave girl, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, named in the order of their birth. Nebaioth, the firstborn of Ishmael, and Kedar. Adil, Misam, Mishama, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, Jetur, Nefish, and Kedama. These are the sons of Ishmael. And these are their names by their villages and by their encampments, twelve princes according to their tribes. This is the length of the life of Ishmael. One hundred thirty-seven years he breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. They settled from Havilah to Shur, which is opposite Egypt, in the direction of Assyria. He settled down alongside all of his people. And now let me read to you from Revelations. Revelations is a, a book that's a collection for one of letters to seven new churches, some that were struggling and in travail. This is Revelations, uh, the second chapter, uh, verse 8 through 11. Revelations always is, I believe, mistaken, a lot of times at least. People take it for a book of dread, a mysterious book. Uh, but book, the book of Revelation is really a, a book of hope. So I'm going to read Revelation 2, uh, 8 through 11. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of the first and the last who was dead and came to life. I know our affliction and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander of the part of those who say that they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Beware, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tested, and for ten days you will be afflicted. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Whoever conquers will not be harmed by the second death. Again, this is a letter to one of the seven churches that were being founded in, in the, uh, the early days of the Christian way. And it was a letter of encouragement. But this letter of encouragement, and then also this passage from Genesis, a, a, long, uh, a long genealogy, what can they speak to us this morning? I want to talk to you a little bit about the, um, the Old Testament people's view of the name. It was the custom of the people of the Old Testament for a father to pass a name down 
uh, naming the children, but in that particular culture, the name of the firstborn was important. And likewise, the passing down of land from one generation to another was also important. Walter Brueggemann has written a wonderful scholarly study of the New Old Testament titled The Land, and uh, The Land as Name and in Prosperity. In Brueggemann's book, he talks about the Old Testament people passing down the land from one generation to another. And this was a way of signifying the promise that would be passed down from one generation. It was their way of, of saying that God's promise is passed down from one generation to another. Uh, that God's eternal promise was passed down just as a name also uh, as the children were named uh, so the family name passed down from one generation to another. And the important thing that the Old Testament people tried to convey in both passing down the names of children and passing land down from one generation to another was to, to give a sign that God's promise, God's uh, promise was passed down, was eternal, it was long-lasting. It, was, it had sticking power from one generation to another. It was a way, really, of the Old Testament people talking about the idea of, um, of eternity and of the perpetuity of God's promise. So just as the person writing to the church in Smyrna was giving them encouragement, so the Old Testament people received encouragement and were encouraged by the belief that God's promise passed like land like a name from one generation to another. So today maybe the theme that we can walk away with is that God's promise sticks and God's promise encourages. So this week continue to reach out to those people that you know and love or people that you just encounter and help them help them receive through your words and through your actions the um, the idea that God is an encouraging God and that encouragement, God's promise, uh, has sticking power in, in their life. Why don't we begin uh, to close down now tonight, today for, uh, for this chance to come together and we'll have a prayer and uh, then I'll invite you to share the names of those you wish to pray for. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Living God, we come to you on, on this morning eager to, to live through the day. We live through this day with hope. Give us the hope, the clarity, and the, and the gladness to know that you're present. Help us to remember that your promise and your love, they are forever. They are passed down from generation to generation. And help us to be your voice to be your hands and your heart and to help others sense your encouragement, your love, and your promise that pass down in all eternity. Protect those who are struggling. Protect us in this day as we move through it and protect those who are ill or combating illness. Bless families who pray for loved ones who are sick. Uh, especially strengthen and protect doctors and nurses and caregivers. And we ask God also that you hear the many prayers that we offer now in this moment. We pray these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, enjoy your day. It's great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Share this uh, with others and invite others to come on as well. And again, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night, Wednesday night for Compline and tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for morning prayer. Again, you can come to Compline for, through our church Facebook page uh, site handle Welcome to St. John's. God bless. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.